What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, which we are recording live. Put out to the world, this is a Q&A episode. It is. Number 17. 17. We've done a oh, bunch boy. of these. And on today's show, we've got a bunch of questions that I don't know. I do. They're right here. You oh, do. You can't see. Sorry. And that's the fun of it. And the other fun is the fact that we just kind of let this one be goofy. And we have a good time with it. And it's always the last episode we, re we record when we get together to record. Yeah. So we're both like... A little punchy. Woo! Uh, hey, and shout out to CJ Mayo. He's What's going right on, now. CJ? I get to see CJ. Oh, soon. Mark's up. Mark Warner's here, too. Hello, nice. Mark. If you guys have questions you want me to ask, you can type it because Jeremy can't see it. I right can't now. see it. I can't see it. But right. I can see it but right he here. can see it. So... Um, yeah, we don't need to do a hard intro on this. Yeah, it's whatever. fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right. All right. Where are we going first? We have our first question. Oh, that might be really loud. It's on the right microphone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First question from Chris Rickard. What's up, Chris? Uh, Chris. Chris always makes sure we have questions. He does. I'm not going to lie. He's a good man. He totally does. Uh, all right. So Chris's first, uh, the first question, sorry, from okay. Chris Rickard. How do you determine if an injury requires time off rather than just modifications to your training? Injuries almost never require time off. Mm. All right. So here, here's my philosophy on injuries. Okay. I believe in evolution. Now, I understand not everyone does. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. This argument that I'm going to make doesn't land quite as well if you are a creationist, intelligent design believer, okay? Assuming you believe in evolution, the things that m allow m mammals to heal broadly are the things that should also allow us to heal most efficiently because nature, biology rewards efficiency. When an animal gets injured, they never put a cast on it. Mm-hmm. They use it, the bear, they use it where they can, right? Watch a dog that hurts its, its paw, right? It, it limps, but it still makes contact with the ground. It's still, it's constantly testing it out. It doesn't go sit in a corner and just rest there for three weeks. Yep. Uh, if you listen to the episode that we did on why icing is bad, bad. with Gary Rinal, mm -hmm. he unpacks all of it. You can go back, you can check out that episode. Philosophically, immobilization and ice have never made sense to me, even when I was a little kid. Thus, stopping versus modification is almost never a good idea in my mind. Chris is asking me this question. I am providing this answer. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing that people don't generally talk about. Are there times where if you are not properly accommodating an injury, you can make the injury worse? Absolutely. And it is from that approach that modern medicine likes to immobilize. Let's put a cast on this so you can't hurt it worse. Mm. Yep. Again, referring back to Gary's episode. An immobilized part of the body as waste product develops through the healing process doesn't get to get moved out it slows down healing yeah. i'm sorry it's true okay what happens to an animal in the wild if it sprains its whatever and sits until it heals it dies it either doesn't get food or it gets eaten or both right so it has to be existing in the most efficient way for healing, which is to continue to go about life and make modification, not just despite the injury, but in an effort to heal the injury. Done. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, I would say that you say there is very little reason to, to not modify. But there has to be a threshold. Because... Or I said to not, there's very little that you would not stop. Yeah. What would you, what would cause you to have that stop? 
we recorded an episode earlier. We were talking about severe injuries. It'll, it'll come out in a few weeks yeah. after, after this one does. Um, you know, you're in a car accident mm -hmm. and you can't stand. Yeah. But from the perspective we talked about, there was still modification to that. Wait for that episode. It comes out soon. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Good job. That's a good answer. I like that. <coughs> Thank uh, you. Um, we've got, you know, a few people in the chat. Hi, people in the chat. Uh, have asked another question, which I'll get to in a moment. But uh, some people not necessarily watching now, but listening later mm -hmm. might be trying to wonder, you know what? I really like what these guys are doing. How can we help them out? Send me all of your money. Well, there you go. Give, send me... Donate a lot of money, and that entitles you to know my address, and then you can send me the rest of your money. There you go. <laughs> uh, more serious answers. There are a lot of things that you can do to help. Is this the, is this the point where I read reviews? What am I doing? No, no, this Patreon. One? Patreon. Okay, yeah. thank you. Our Patreon continues to grow, which is super cool. Very rarely does someone stop contributing to the Patreon. And we are always looking at ways to create more value within the Patreon, which I think is why people remain contributing. As little as two bucks a month, as much as a hundred bucks a month, the more you contribute, the more you get. There's exclusive episodes, video. I put up a bunch of stuff. And we are in the very, very early stages talking about a Patreon exclusive show. You get a whole access to a whole new show. Not only do you get to consume the show, but depending on the tier, you get to contribute to the show. And be a part of it in some way. Be a part of it. Yeah. Yep. There's, I have, I am always looking for how do we do something a little bit different? How do we do a thing that hasn't been done? I'm not aware of this being done. Mm. I want to make a show for and by all the Patreon people. Interesting. Yeah. Love it. Okay. This is the first time we've talked about it that bluntly and this publicly. Yeah. But it is going to happen. So you six people listen. What? Oh, sorry, only five because one of them is this one right of, here. One of them's you. Uh, one of them's me. Uh, you heard it first here. One of which Brian Doucette just showed up in the hey, Brian. chat. So I nice see you. And, Brian, uh, host of and creator of Everyday Martial Artists. Yeah, great absolutely. show. If you like our show, and you uh, check out a his new show. new person just commented from India. He said, uh, "Good job, uh, Sudarshan from India." I'm assuming that's like... I recognize well, that name. That's someone who's been around yeah. a little bit. So, uh, you know, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, join the Patreon. It would be, it would, it'll help out. Help yeah. us continue I gotta talk show. For, Craig and I are going to spearhead that. we got to talk about that. Awesome. Uh, Mark Warner also said that was a great answer on injury. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and our next question comes from Mark. Oof. He just posted in the chat. And okay. this is a, a question for both of us. Okay. Uh, and he didn't say whether we're supposed to answer for, for each or if we have our own individual answer. But his okay. question is, what is the most pleasant memory of martial arts you both have? Mm. So I don't know if that means we together have the same. Let's answer it independently memory? because independently. you and I don't have a ton of training time together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you think of yours first, by all means, jump in. It's pleasant training, pleasant martial arts memory. My my most pleasant martial arts. Actually, you know what? I'm I'm. It's free training day. It's oh, the yeah. collection of free training days. And at first, I was like, okay, but which one? And my first thought was, I was thinking of you. And I think the second time I met you, when you showed up to the one in Woodstock. Yep, 2019. We had we had talked a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd met you before. I think I had been on the show at that point. Yeah, but I, I didn't really know you. And you were there, like, earlier. Like, how can I help? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm incorporating you as, as an example of what happens at Free Training Day. And the, the just the really cool thing that we have collectively created that is unlike anything else I've ever experienced because it, it's... It's just a big collaborative effort. It's it defies words. You've experienced mm -hmm. it yep. in a way that you understand it defies words. And anybody out there who's participated in it understands I have a hard time explaining this. It's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. You can, it is incredibly difficult to describe it's something you have to experience. And I'm incredibly 
happy that more people will get to experience that this year since we have free training day in New England, which will be in Keene, New Hampshire in November. November 12th. Yep. And then we also this year for the first time are having free training day, uh, Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and Atlanta, Georgia. So mm -hmm. more people will get to experience what this is, which is really good. If you want to read more, we've got a page at the website at whistlekick.com. But let me let me just tie up that and I'll hand the ball to you. Yeah, yeah. The reason that is so powerful to me is that I am hyper aware during that day that it is the people I have known, trained with, learned from that led to that event. Mm -hmm. Even the people who aren't there contributed to that. I think back to instructors that I had and the breadth of instructors I had. It is it is because, because I am who I am and I approach martial arts the way I do that free training day happens. And I spearhead it. We now spearhead mm -hmm. the one up here. But I just, I am so grateful and overwhelmed with gratitude during that day because all these people are like, yeah, I'm going to go do this thing. I don't get paid for it. I'm just going to show up. It's yeah. cool. Yep. It's a That's, very, it's a very powerful day. That, that is, that is mine. Yeah. So it's interesting that both of ours have nothing to do with <laughs> testing or martial arts or a specific yeah. class or anything. It's an event. And for me, it's all in weekend. Really? Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, little, little peek behind the curtain there. You know, I, I've been training martial arts for, you know, almost, I think 30 years at this point, you know, off and on sure. um, lots of different instructors, but I've never owned my own school. Uh, I've never had direct students with one kind of exception within martial arts. It, you know, I, I have done some instructing, mm -hmm in the martial arts schools that I've been a part of, but never really in charge. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of teaching experience, but just not within martial arts. And all in weekend, I was really nervous about going in and being an instructor mm -hmm. and having people essentially paying me money mm -hmm. to show them martial arts. And many of the people there if you look at their training on paper and yeah. you look at my training on paper, they know more than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of that weekend, I walked away saying, you know what? Uh, this was good. This was good for me um, because I learned just as much as one of the instructors yeah. as the people there. That, that was, that was a transitional weekend for you. Yeah. I, I watched it. And so that was, uh, you know, Mark posed this question as pleasant. Like that was in incredibly pleasant yeah. for me. Uh, that was a very pleasant memory. And I'm proud that Mark was a part of that. Uh, Just know? because you don't have to know everything somebody else knows in order to teach them something new. Yeah. And we need to get rid of that con that idea in the martial arts. Absolutely. And I will even go so far as to say, and I'm glad Mark's in the chat. Um, you know, Mark, you're one of the people that I was worried about. Not worried about. That sounds really bad. But you have so much experience in the martial arts that I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be teaching this guy. Like, he, How do he, you teach someone been, who knows so much? Yeah. And, and uh, credit to Mark and everyone that was in attendance, they made it easy because yeah. everyone came willing to learn and wanting to learn and being eager to learn. And it, and it made it a lot easier for me as an instructor. And so thanks, Mark. <laughs> People watching. We are more than half sold for next April's event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we move on really quick, uh, Mark said very powerful answers. And Thanks, he said, I worry about me too. <laughs> so, you know, there we go. Oh, Mark. <laughs> um, oh, Mark. So I do have another question coming in, but yeah. we should – What's next? Let's give a – let's read a review. Review? And okay. Give away free stuff because who right. doesn't like free so stuff? Here, so here's the deal. There are three really important spots for you to leave reviews. There's a fourth for ratings. If you can leave a rating for Spotify, you've got to do it from a phone or a tablet. You need to do it from the Spotify app. That helps us. We actually saw what we think is a surge in viewership that came in when we prioritized Spotify and said, everybody, please leave ratings. So that's number one. You can't leave a review, so we don't know who leaves them. But 
reviews on Apple Podcasts, in Google, and on our Facebook page, Whistlekick Martial Arts. If you leave reviews in any of those places, it helps the company overall. Okay. Um, so today I've got a Google review from John Arujo, and I will read this. And John, if you reach out, if you heard this, we send you a gift certificate. Folks out there, uh, I'll send, trust me, your, your odds of earning a gift certificate, leaving a review, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, where is it? It is right here. Whistlekick from podcast, live daily shows, merchandise, and martial arts gear. Awesomeness. Check out Whistlekick. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, John. Awesome. So free gift certificate. Yeah, that's John, just email me. I know you that's have That's pretty amazing. Money. Yep. Uh, all right. So this next question, actually, again, coming in live from the chat from Brian. What do you think is one of the most misunderstood things about martial arts to the general public? <laughs> Those that are only listening that I, are not watching. I made him, I made him stop. I've never... I've never been able to create that reaction with you before, and good. I'm so excited that I made it happen. I'm actually not going to say what happened. <laughs> you okay. got to watch it to find out. That was uh, so. Okay. What's the question? Uh, hang on, I'm going to go like this. So I'm not <laughs> looking at you. What? But of course, I see you on my screen. Oh, man, you can't. I can't everywhere. get away. Uh, the question again from Brian Desette. Uh What do you think is one of the most misunderstood things about martial arts to the general public? The amount of violence. That would be nice. I, I, I think the amount of violence, and sadly, this is, you know, it, it shows up in every element of martial arts culture, right? What martial arts competitions do the average is the average person aware of? MMA, yeah. right? You and I and a lot of our listeners will draw a fine line between those because, yeah, it's, it's martial arts, but it's not what most of us engage in, okay? It's not what we would call traditional martial arts. It is... It is a very distinctive sport in the same way that, um, you know, soccer is a sport and there's a skill set. There's kicking in soccer. Mm -hmm. There's kicking in football. Those are not martial arts. Okay. I'm not saying MMA isn't a martial in art. In your opinion. Is. Right. Someone may think that soccer is a martial art and that's fine. Okay. Um, when you think of martial arts movies, the ones that have done the best of the recently – are incredibly violent. John Wick, I'm intentionally ignoring that. John Wick, uh, the Raid series, mm -hmm. are, are really violent films. They, those are, are celebrated in our world as being really good modern martial arts films. Uh, and that leaves the average person to fill in the gaps themselves as to what martial arts is, and thus they form the opinion that it is violent when the irony is, I think, if anything, the average martial artist is less violent, less violent. Uh, than the I average non-martial artist because we have a better understanding of what violence is. Uh, we train against violence. We train to suppress violence. And those things combined, yeah. You really want to understand a perspective on violence, death, killing, war, talk to a soldier. Hmm. The soldiers that I've really had strong conversations with, a lot of them are pacifists. They're like, I came out of that. I never wanted to yeah. be involved in that or subject someone else to it ever again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's similar in the martial arts world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And, we, and we've had discussions. We've done Thursday episodes about the the correlation that the general public makes from ufc style mma yeah. and traditional martial arts uh, so i get that uh brian also commented uh you were talking about soccer kicking whatever the rest of the movie shaolin soccer okay so so there you go yep um yeah yeah i i, yeah, I agree i think that's good um i have Uh, Bad taste in movies. No, no. I, Mark Warner and I both have great taste in movies. Uh, and actually, Brian's in the chat, too. All three of us love Best of the Best. Such a good movie. Anyway, uh, I have a test coming up in January. 
and I really need to get mm, a little better cardio and a little better flexibility. And I have started to look at and am going to be working through some of our programs mm. that Whistlekick has. Yeah. And I can't stress enough how amazing that I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I I've read through it and I see where it's going to go. Can you talk a little bit about about those programs? Sure. So the flexibility program is the is the one that's free, and we did that because flexibility is is kind of the thing that is most broadly ascribed to martial artists. Not that other disciplines aren't seen as having flexibility, but if you were to think of a quality of a a really good martial artist, a lot of people would think flexibility. So that program, like all of our programs, deeply rooted in science and not old science, new science. I put in a significant amount of time digging into the research and making sure that my understanding was correct and still correct and building a program that leveraged that based on not just the science, but what has worked for me, what I've seen work for others and being realistic, asking someone, hey, do this three hour a day flexibility program is unrealistic. Yeah. If I said, hey, stretch three hours once and you'll be flexible forever, people will be like, all right, I'll, I'll make the time for that. But that's not the way life works. Life is busy. And all of our programs are built around the realization that life is busy and frequency matters. So the flexibility program is based around that. And uh, again, it's free, whistlekick.com. Like, completely free. If you get it and you do it and you don't see results, I want to talk to you because I want to know what's different about your body versus everyone else. Hmm. The only people I'm aware of that do not get results from are the people that don't follow it because yeah. it takes an investment of time. Not a lot of time, but some time. Yeah. I can't get you more flexible with zero time. The other program, the conditioning program, which we call fuel is rooted in the premise that getting out and training at moderate intensity for activity that is high intensity does not have a direct correlation hmm. to go out and run eight miles. So you can step in and do 20, 30 second, two minute rounds. It doesn't add up. And I spent a bunch of time doing the research on this confirming for myself. I watched a bunch of boxing matches and fights everything from HEMA to whatever. And here's the thing. You're going to see what I call surges mm -hmm. of 10 to 15 at most 20 seconds. And then people back off. Yeah. Why? Because the way our cardiovascular system is built, the way glycogen operates and the entire training program, because it's for martial artists is built around that idea. Go watch some UFC and any MMA, and you will see condensed high intensity flurry followed by break, mm -hmm. and then people chill out, replenish a little bit of glycogen, catch their breath, and then they, again. they go again. Mm -hmm. And the training program is built on that and not, okay, this week you're going to run this many miles, and next week you're going to run an extra half mile, yeah. and yeah. building you up that way. Is there a place for that? Absolutely. Is it the fastest, most resistant to injury training protocol that you can have as a martial artist? No. So I built that because it didn't exist. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm look. you know, like I said, I've got six months or so to work through the program. So I'm really excited about getting going. I got a comment from someone. I think I mentioned this on first cop. I mentioned it somewhere recently that I got a comment from someone who used the fuel program for their black belt test. And she said, I, I had more in the tank when we were done. I think you mentioned it this morning. Did I? Yeah. yeah. And it, it works. Mm -hmm. They all work. They all have like the endorsement of, of medical professionals because mm -hmm. I don't just do things in a vacuum. I'm like, hey, did I get this right? And they're like, oh yeah, is you you know this? You're not supposed to know this. Like, yeah, yeah. how do you know this? Awesome. Um, Available whistlegig.com. Yeah. Um, a comment on your last answer. Uh, Jeff Curry said, uh, "Truth as a soldier, I can relate and agree about soldiers coming back wanting to be pacifist." Totally get it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Liz. She just showed up in the chat. Um, our last question actually is going to come oh, from there. Jeff Curry. Oh, nice. Uh, and this might be kind of a fun one, and it might be a really short one. Uh, his question is, 
How's the martial arts seminar tour going? Any stories from the road? It's going well. Uh, I knew going into it this year. Well, a little, little bit of background. So last year's last year was ending. I was finding a few things. One, Whistlekit grows when we get to share our philosophy with others, meaning getting them to events or me getting to them. Mm -hmm. We do a bunch of events. We're constantly adding events. We're growing in that way. But what did the other end look like? How do I get in front of people? Oh, I can teach. What do I teach? Well, I, there's this, there's that training protocol around moving slowly and everything that I teach that people kind of dig. And so eight months ago, I said, let's make 2022. Let's make this a goal that I, I teach some seminars and started doing some seminars and they started going really well. And we're just as an aside, we're still adding dates to that. So if you and your school want to have me in, this is not something we're trying to make money on. I'm just trying not to lose too much money on it. Uh, ultimately, I would like to get in front of people and, you know, make a little bit of money. Pay for your time. Pay for, pay for my time. Yeah, yeah. You know, at this point, I'm happy to pay for the gas and the hotel and some of the meals and, mm -hmm. and, and whatever. Um, but we're as I get better, we're like everything else we do, slowly incrementing and, and, and finding ways to improve, including raising the price a little bit as I get better. So. If you want to have me in, don't wait because it'll be more expensive than if you don't wait. But in terms of stories, um, there's, there's, let me think for a moment. While you think. Yeah, please. Hi, Elkie. She just showed up. Now. Oh, hi, Elkie. Okay, just showed up. Um, I know the kind of stories you're looking for. Then there, are, Jeff, they, those don't exist. There aren't stories of, of big, fancy, dramatic things, but go ahead. What, what the I, one I'm thinking, and it wasn't really the tour, but at all in weekend, maybe there's something funny that happened there. There were, sure. there were, yeah, there, there <laughs> were, there were a bunch of things. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want to share all in weekend stuff yeah. because yeah. that, that kind of operated in a bubble, and I, yeah. and I like that being in a bubble. Yeah, yeah, bubbles are fun. <laughs> but what, what happens inevitably? when I teach what I'm teaching for a seminar is you get somebody, there's always at least one person who struggles to slow down. Mm. And when I have that person, that person gets a lot of attention because the things that we're doing, there are milestones and we can't move on to the next milestone until I can get everybody to where they need to be at least there's a minimal standard else it creates the risk for injury or at the very at best everyone's not going to get the benefit so there are times where i get people who i i could tell they're mad they're so annoyed they're like tell me, go slow. leave me alone i don't want to do this i don't agree with your philosophy stop harassing me i can see it in their eyes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there have been seminars where one person over like, say, a 20 minute span is getting 40 percent of my attention. And I know it's driving them nuts, but they don't know what it looks like in hindsight. I do. Yeah. So yeah. I know what I need to do to get them where they need to go. And in every case. I get them to have that breakthrough and we move on and I slide up to them and I'm like. You get it now? And they're like. Yeah, <laughs> you know, reluctantly, but they see it and they understand. And that moment where someone who had a hard time is able to see why I push them so hard. And a lot of you out there are instructors and, and you know what I'm talking about. When someone who struggled with a concept or a technique is finally able to get it and in part due to your insistence on pushing them, that's a powerful feeling. Yeah. And that has happened every time I've taught. And I love it. So that of, of stories, Jeff, that's that's the best one I can give you. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks. That's uh I think, you know, we, I think that's a good episode today. I agree. That's the fourth episode we've recorded today. Yeah, and I'm recording number five later on. You are recording number five. Yeah. There will be something very, we're not going to tell them what, but there will be something incredibly special about 
the episode you're recording later. Yeah. Uh, for those listening when this episode comes out, it was last week's episode. <laughs> I'm glad you can keep all this for this is those track. For those watching live, it's coming out in two weeks. How about the people watching live that are participating in the episode? I'll see you tonight. Yeah, I'll see you tonight. Uh, are there any? Mm. Okay. Are there? No. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I would. I would have guessed at least one of them. No, nope. I mean they they haven't said anything anyway. Um, we'll before we do our outro. Yeah. Jeff says, "Well, between my school and our surrounding community, in the uh, in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, I would love to get a seminar going here." Jeff, email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Let's let's see if we can make it work. Yep. As long as it's not the south side of Chicago. Okay. North side of Chicago, I understand, is okay. I don't know. No clue. Uh, all right. So there we go. Thank you. Yeah, and anybody who wants to talk about a seminar, just because you email me doesn't mean like you have to go forward with it. Like there's a lot, there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of logistics. Mm -hmm. And I don't pretend that it's going to work for everybody in every school, but I will say value exchange, because we know that's critical to me. There is no better value exchange in bringing someone in than bringing me in. It'll be worth it. Is what you're saying. It's going to be worth it. And if we do it right, you, the school makes a little bit of money. He said, sounds good. Everybody wins. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're thinking good. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. To those of you who tuned in live, thank you. To those of you who might be watching or listening saying, I want to tune in live. I didn't know it was happening. That's because we don't tell you in advance. Because we have enough things to coordinate with these episodes that, sorry, we're not going to hold you a fixed date and time. We do enough things that are live. First Cup is live every morning at 6.30. You could join us for that. We have other things that are brewing mm -hmm. that will be live. But this is kind of a catch as catch can. So if you're following us on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, you'll get a notification that we are around. And you can come on and you can watch for whatever you can. And it also happens midday. Not yeah. everybody can tune in midday. And, and we, I typically post in the Facebook group. If yep. you're not in the whistle kick behind the scenes group, you wouldn't know. That's right. So if you're not a member of that group, join that group, whistle kick behind the scenes. And this morning I posted and said later on today... I don't know what time because we recorded a bunch it's of other It's usually episodes. like 11 to 12. Yeah, in that about 11 to 30 ish. 11 yeah. to noon Eastern US, somewhere in that ballpark. Yep. Yep. So um, if you want to email, if you have a question for the next QA, email Andrew, not me, Andrew at mm -hmm. Whistlekick, martial arts yep. radio .com. Our social media is at Whistlekick, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. If you want to have me in the school, email me. If you want to check out one of the training programs, they're at Whistlekick.com. Flex is free, but you can get 15% off. Fuel, force, or fast by using the code podcast15 or anything else in the store over there. If you are part of this family and you're not checking out the whistlekick.com slash family page on a weekly basis, you are missing out on uh, some fun stuff, a little bit of context, you know, kind of like a mini Patreon. We do have the full-blown Patreon. starts at $2 a month, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.